Live from the Coefficient Media Studios in Jackson, Michigan. This is the Android App Show, episode number 54. And today, we're doing all honeycomb apps. Get down. Welcome to the Android App Show. The future of the telephone business is bright and rich with promise for the millions of telephone users like yourselves quick acceptance and ready use of each improvement in telephone service has helped make possible an endless chain of accomplishments. What will it be this time? Welcome to the Android App Show, everybody. We've got apps coming out of every device we have in the studio. That's right. How many screens do we have in here? Um, a, little, a lot. One, I got three. We've got four here, five, six, seven, eight. 9, 10, 11, 12, and that kind 13. of camera screens, TV. 13. Wow. A little 10 by almost 10. This is crazy. Yeah. Oh, you need you need a mic, Brad. We could totally... Uh, there we go. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Almost. Mic it up. <laughs> nice. Cool. So uh, I think we'll get started. You know what's going to happen this week? Ooh, what is happening? This. Ooh, the Motorola Zoom. The Zoom. That's and right. it's so awesome, <laughs> I'm actually going to be reviewing an app. Or two. Or two. So <laughs> we'll get started into this uh, right away. Um, we've got a lot to talk about, as you can see. Let's introduce ourselves, though. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm Dave, of course. Yeah, if you don't well, already know who we are. You know, you know me, Dave. Hi. Yeah, you might have to get some more uh, free loving up on that mic, Brad. Yeah. Get close and personal. Put that right between your legs there. <laughs> there we go. That's right. Oh, That's why oh, I said free oh, loving. Put it oh, between your legs. You'll be all right. Oh, Lots there can you hear me now? Oh, oh that's beautiful. Won't give you anything. And that's Brad. <laughs> How's it going? And I'm Lane. Yes. Rocking my Duff shirt. Mm-hmm. You've seen a couple episodes with me on this. I don't care. I'll keep wearing you it. You kind of blend into the couch. I know. Every time I wear it, you say that. Yeah, you kind of do. <laughs> <laughs> Good thing we don't red screen things in I here. know. <laughs> <laughs> totally ruin things. Mm-hmm. That's all right, though. I'll be headless or bodiless. Just do the head. <laughs> headless would be good, too. Whatever. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> Okay, so um, I'll leave I you guess alone, though. Let's do, let's I'll get started with this app here. Uh-oh, you're on the... Oh. Yeah, we have our new setup. Uh, if, you, if you've seen last week's episode, we have HDMI out now so that we can pipe video right into the computer. Your face. Yes, that's right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> pipe video right to your face. <laughs> yeah, so we can do cool things like this. Watch. Wait for it. You got to wait for it. And then we go <laughs> like this. Boom. Ooh. And, of course, the Motorola Zoom tablet doesn't require root to get HDMI out. It comes right with it. The screen mirroring. Yeah. Before the iPad 2 did. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> we know. We know how cool that is. That's right. It does a lot uh, of things before the iPad 2 did. True. Uh, the first app we're going to be reviewing this week is, of course, Google Body. And Google Body is uh, it's kind of one of those apps that a lot of people... Are interested in because it's a new way to interact with information or a visual representation of things on the screen. So it's basically just you know um, nothing too fancy. Nah. Let's pull it up here. Body, it's right up here in the corner. Looks like a Google with person body. You know, <clears throat> it opens it up. Oh, look at that! There's a lady. Let's spin her around. Let's take a look at her body. Yeah, yeah, look at that. Look at that thing. Yeah, there's nothing to... I mean, you can see your memories, but... Memories. There's nothing too explicit. Yeah, you can. Um, if you want to... You can pinch and zoom. Oh, oh, yeah. You so can you pinch, pinch and zoom, or are you gonna, what you going to pinch on? <laughs> um, her nose. All right. You can go into her head here. Doesn't look like there's much in there. <laughs> no. <Nope>. There's <laughs> eyes. Look at... She's got eyeballs. Eye sockets. And you this operates tap it. pretty much the same way that Maps does, right? Yeah. So you just tap different sections, and it'll show you what those are. It's kind of weird. You can click on the eyes or, you know, what, what's <clears throat> eyelashes. Come on. you got to find one, though. <laughs> yeah, you have to. There we go. There it is. That's weird looking. Eyelashes. Kind of looks like a uh, like a mime. Yeah. Well, I um, only zoom headed to Staples. And then you can search her body. You can search her body. Um, or you can uh, pull up different kind of, I don't know, like groups, body, like groups of things. So up here is her full body in this top section up here. Well, if I'm going stick to with, stick with the uh, maps analogy, I'm going to call them layers. Okay, different layers. So there's the body. 
There's like muscles. So you can take a look at what all the muscles are in the human body here. So zoom it out some. And this is one thing I found. If you go up and down, you can get top and bottom views too. And that's so what, that's single finger nice. up and down? or Yeah, single two, finger up and okay. down. It doesn't really do a oh. dual <laughs> finger. Nice view. Yeah. <laughs> that's why I've turned your mic down, Brad. Yeah. Oh. A little bit. You can go so inside their body. I am totally immature, and I will laugh mm -hmm. at all of this. So. so. And then you can go to bones. See her bones. She's got some good bones. I bet she does. Organs. There's organs. Lots of organs. The the vascular system. Circulatory. Circulatory. That's what I meant. <laughs> or, the nervous. Uh. Mm, yes. Nervous system. And her brain. Now, Lane was wondering, could you go inside of her brain? Yes, you can. You just yeah, it's weird. I was clicking. Like, in. when you click on things in here, click. it tells you the name of them. Boom. Well, and when I clicked on the brain, I thought, well, maybe it would say the name, but maybe it would zoom it in and pick it apart. Yeah, if you just, if you're out pretty doesn't. far, you just pick, pick the brain. It, it just, just says Dura Matter. Yeah. Which is weird. I just gave blood. So they ask you that Dura Matter. Have you had a Dura Matter transplant? What? Really? Yeah. They asked you that? Yeah, haven't you given blood before? It's kind of a personal question. Oh, there's a lot of personal questions there. <laughs> oh, yeah. Like, I guess you should have answer. Have you ever been to Africa? Or what? have you ever had sex with anybody that exchanges sex for drugs? Uh, nice. That would be good to know, I guess, if you were giving yeah. blood. So, as you can see, it's a fun little app. Good way to, I mean, just get it interesting. It's fun to do this, too. It kind of looks like a sim. It does. <laughs> so, good times, lots of fun, and that is the body. You gotta, you gotta like that Google body, and it is one of those free apps in the market there. Yeah, good and times. especially made for honeycomb, right? It has the right the menuing system and everything. I don't know if you can bring up uh, the app again on the top right, like far uh, beyond where it shows all the different views. You should see like another little square up there, and this is a new kind of motif I don't in see the it. far corner. It doesn't have it on no, there? No, it doesn't have it on here. Oh, okay. Well, we'll see it on another app. Whatever. I totally ruined it. You did. That's okay. <laughs> it's in the market. It's free. It's good. Download it now. So, the next app we have here, if I can take a look and see, it is, this is cool. This is something that I've used quite a bit, not on tablets before, uh, but just in general, how do you find it on here, Lane? Uh, go right. Go right, young man. Yep. A couple times. There you are. You went oh, first. I went too far. There it is. See, you organized it. Thank you. Hey, I tried. The app, <laughs> the second app I'm going to be reviewing this week is free, and it's for those people who like to browse the internet wisely. It's called Firefox. It is an internet browser for Android and for many platforms, but the Android one is cool. Because it's a unique way to browse on your device here. Let's pull it up. There we go. And here we go. We'll open it up. Firefox is loading. And it's this is designed for those HD devices. Um, a little bigger. Fits the screen well. And this is what makes it interesting. To navigate, to do some navigation, you kind of... Oh, look at that. The menuing is on the bottom, the, the right and left. And that's one thing that I don't like about the Chrome browser on here is on the Chrome browser, you have t tabs along the top section here that take up most of your space. Yeah. So let's just go to some of these generic bookmarks that they have in here. Well, and the great thing about this menuing on the right and left side is when you're holding these honeycomb tablets, they're in landscape mode. And right. so your thumbs are right there. And so all you have to do is just swipe left or, you know, swipe right. And it'll open up the menu and you can just pick it with your thumb. Whereas on the Chrome browser, it's all in the top and you have to remove a hand. And it doesn't sound like it's that big of a deal. But this is kind of a heavy device to hold landscape just in one hand and just let it hang there all the weight. I mean, you really start to feel it. So uh, just being able to swipe and, you know, click a favorite or something like that. Uh, it really makes a big uh, difference in, mm -hmm. as, as far as usability goes. Yeah, so it's it's going a little slow right now for some reason. It's not really... Can you go? Go to... Go to Yahoo. Maybe it's Yahoo. Maybe. 
Well, I do have the SciTech Google News. That's a that's an oldie but a goodie. Google News. Yeah, it's not working right now. That's weird. I wonder if it's the Wi-Fi or something. It probably is. It's probably Brad. Hey, way to go, Brad. Oh, mm-hmm. he's on Google Earth. I don't oh, think, downloading that the whole that, Earth. Yeah, that wouldn't. Um, one thing that I found was interesting with this. So you have your bookmarks here. You have your history. You also have a desktop. So it can sync with your computer and your devices. So like you add your computer and it'll sync everything over. Not sure. Does nice. it? Do you know what exactly it syncs over? Uh, it'll sync over bookmarks in history. Okay, so it doesn't do like it doesn't sync tabs that are open though, does it? Uh, no. I think it also does password management too. Mhm. That's cool. But the the interface is really nice. Yeah, that's uh, what is so cool wood. about this. And then you just click down there for a new tab. You see, so you just go to the left, add more new tabs. Try turning off the uh, the Wi-Fi. On the far right bottom, you click on the thing down there, Boom. and then click it again, and then hit Wi-Fi. Whoops. Oh, nope. Not good. Back. Where'd you go? Take me back. <laughs> okay. Wi-Fi. Yeah, so hit the Wi-Fi one. So you're getting a little, a little tech tip here, too, I guess. Mm-hmm. Uh, turn off Wi-Fi. And we have Ryzen service, so... This this does this on the Google TV also. You totally turned it back on. But, uh, yeah, That's you're okay. right. This Should looks exactly now. like the Google TV interface. And, oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, fans of ours know we make a Google TV show, so we're we're pretty familiar with that. Uh, as soon as I brought up the settings menu, I noticed that right away. I'm like, this is a Google TV. You know, they, they just essentially uh, built on top of it. But if you think about it, it kind of makes sense because, you know, this larger screen... It's kind of that halfway UI between what they were doing on Android and what they were doing on Google TV. Mm-hmm. So let's pull it up here. I hope that it hope this loads now. Yeah, I mean it. It, it, it is a good browser. I swear. Did you try a refresh? I did. What the hey? There's a bunch of tabs open. Maybe if we close some of these. I feel bad about that. I mean, the Google, the Firefox, it, it worked for me earlier today. I was mm-hmm. using it instead of Chrome. Yeah. And you can bookmark things over here, go back and forth. The settings, maybe the settings are messed up. I don't know. You can change um, the pages that you want. Languages, auto detect, start page, syncing, you know, all sorts of different cool things. Text zooming. You can turn images off. And this will uh, detect for some pages on uh, the mobile thing. It'll kick them into a mobile version automatically. Okay. And I believe there's a setting on there that you can turn that off. But You can manage plugins or add-ons here, downloads. So they have this whole management thing. It's kind of neat to see how that works. Um, and if you heard that the Firefox download was huge, of course that was the alpha release that they had. And mm-hmm. before they put it on the market, uh, they... Certainly did a lot of optimization because it's much smaller. Now this is interesting. Like in the HDMI out that we're showing you right now, it cuts off this bottom section here. So there's the whole menuing section that's normally on the like rim of the phone or the 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 bezel of the phone. Yeah. And it's interesting tablet. that they don't <laughs> show it. It's kind of yeah. Cool. Fun stuff. It's the honeycomb uh, honeycomb default bar on the bottom, right? That's what you're talking about? Yes, yes. I feel kind of bad. I wish the internet was working on there. I know. I don't know what the hopefully, heck the issue is. Hopefully it... But, yeah, definitely download Firefox yourself and check it out if you have a tablet because it's much better than the Chrome browser. Yeah. And it's free. Mm-hmm. It's a, a little, little slower when I was using it on my phone as far as load times. Uh, you might get that, but... Uh, my issue, though, is the user interface. I mean, it, it lags a little bit in loading JavaScript and stuff like that uh, as far as you know, comparing it to Chrome. But, again, cool. you just have to consider convenience. Right. All right, Lane, I will uh, hand you the tablet, oh. and we'll see what you can come up with. You got a couple apps? Uh, yes, I did. The yeah. first one, uh, my first app this week, isn't even necessarily a Honeycomb app. Mm-hmm. Uh, but we've been covering a lot of the security issues lately with these, uh, you know, what the Droid Dream infections that hit the market. So I thought this week, you know, what's going to be great is showing off security apps 
yeah. for Honeycomb. Pretty cool. But the only one I've been able to find that actually will install oh. and is available for Honeycomb is called Antivirus Free. And it's free on the Android market. And uh, I don't know. It's, uh, it's all right. It's from what I've been using it as, it compares pretty equally to other more well-known antivirus uh, apps like Lookout. So if we can bring up the tablet here, you're not going to see anything impressive. It automatically puts it in portrait mode here, and the uh, HDMI output kind of locks that on the screen there. But turn your head sideways or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> if you're watching an Android device, tilt your Android device yeah. or something. Lock your orientation and tilt it portrait. <laughs> uh, but it lets you stop the service because it runs all the time. uses very little battery, though. Or you can do a scan now, and it'll scan uh, every single app that you have. And it's free because it has a little advertisement down there on the bottom. Hmm. So no malicious apps were found. Good. That's awesome. But you can go on using your Honeycomb tablet uh, like normal. And then uh, when you pull up your market and you go to, let's go to top free apps here. And I'll just download some some Joe Blow app. Joe what do we Blow want? App. That's right. How about uh, Solitaire? Whatever. So download this, hit OK, and then you got the loading stuff right there on the light on the left side. I like that new loading animation. So let's see. Over here in my notification area, it shows installing. And then it kicked me over to my apps when I pulled that up. Let me let me go back here. There it is. Sorry, I was hitting too many buttons. That screen, that uh, that HDMI mirroring kind of slows the tablet down. Yeah, a it bit. does, unfortunately. Uh, but it runs much better than the mirroring that I have installed on my Evo. Yeah. So you can definitely tell the difference in the dual core. Um, and I think that if they get some more uh, optimizations, that'll be great. But if you look on the bottom right of the screen here, you'll see this little notification down there that says application. Mm -hmm install detected you'll get that oh, cool. little notification every time and it scans it, it says package com dot kmagic dot solitary is clean oh and you can just hit the x on the right and it'll dismiss that that's good entry right there and really that's the only interaction that you're going to have with this app most of the time so we got a little bit of uh yeah you're wiggling your hdmi a little bit a little crashy a little bit of uh, the screen is off on the tablet. The gray screen of death. Oh, crap. You broke it, Lane? Ah, uh, it just restarted. <laughs> <laughs> Yay. It's like the old iPad 1 days. <laughs> right? Yeah. <laughs> Be reviewing apps on the iPad show and... Uh, maybe we can do a... Like, it. while that's restarting, maybe we can just do a quick little rundown of what the hardware is like on it. With the yeah, awesome. So the gadget cam there. Yeah, if you're curious about this, it's a uh, it's a dual core processor. Of course, when you start it up, it has that little uh, what is that? Uh, Motorola dual core yeah. technology. Even though it's not even Motorola's dual core technology. Oh, that's kind of cool. Yeah, and you get this uh, honeycomb boot screen, um, but it has a dual core one gear one gigahertz processor with, I believe, one gigabyte of RAM. Where's the power button? That's the first thing that confused yeah, me. The power button. <laughs> It's it on is the back. right here on the back. We're not we're not really well lit on the gadget cam. Because it's a screen know, can shooter. Can we pull up the yeah. uh, the power buttons right here so that when you're holding the tablet, uh, it's kind of natural right by your uh, finger where it would be on the top. That's but cool. You also have a speaker, a flash, dual flash actually, mm -hmm. which the iPad 2 doesn't have even, yeah, yeah, yeah. and your back camera. Is it a good camera? Uh, it is a really good camera. I shot Ooh. some video with it. And you have another cool. speaker over here. So you have stereo speakers, which, again, the iPad does not have. Is it 5 or an 8? What's that? Uh, camera. Megapixel. Uh, it is 5. 5 megapixel. So, And, of course, you have the uh, all-new Honeycomb unlock screen. Also has a front-facing camera. Yes. Right on the front. Right in the middle. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and it's... On the middle, on the side here, because these honeycomb tablets, uh, they're trying to use them, or they're trying to get you to use them as a landscape device. Oh, you just palmed it. Oh, yeah. That's right. Boom. 
Um, but you have this new lock screen right here where you just touch on the lock button and then you drag it out of the circle. So it's like sumo wrestling for a lock button. It is exact. That's a great reference. I like that. (laughs) It's exactly like sumo wrestling. So, but aside from the app crashing and everything, (laughs) it wasn't the app that crashed the tablet. It was the HDMI. And you're right. I was wiggling it around and I think it was a little bit of problem with the, uh, you know, it confusing it too much with that loose HDMI uh, connection. So confused it. Yeah, you know, it was young and confused and <laughs> mm-hmm. made some bad decisions. Yeah. So, but check that out. It's on the Android market. It's free. And again, it's called Antivirus Free. So it's all in the name. If you want a free antivirus program, then uh, you just look up Antivirus Free. And boom, there you are. Yeah. So it's also, it'll also work on your phone too. But protect yourself, you yeah. know. Use protection. For sure. And this is the only one so far that works on Honeycomb. I anticipate that pretty soon yeah. Lookout and the like are going to be releasing Honeycomb compatible versions, um, cool. but nothing yet. Cool. So there we go. All right. Well, Moving well, on. Is the HDMI going to work when I get my app review? Yeah. It, it works now. Oh, it totally works. It works it's just like you can't wiggle the stuff around. Yeah, no wiggle no wiggling. It freaks it out. Okay. Mm-hmm. Gray screen. But I, got right. one, I got one more app. Oh. oh. That's right. Yeah. We're, I'm doing two, guys. Yeah. I'm doing two. Do it. Let's do it. <laughs> do it, do it. All right, this app is called Gun Brothers. Now, I wanted to review this on the HTC Evo, but I kept running into all these little crashing problems and stuff. Um, well, it wasn't crashing. It was just lagging really bad. So, yeah. I don't know. I'll show you, I'll show you the, the problems I was having. Um, but here it is. Let's pull up the all-new HDMI cam. Boom. So, Gun Brothers. Don't crash it again. Why don't you just set it down? Because I don't want to. And I got to control it holding it. Uh, <laughs> so I got this loading screen, and you got this cool stuff here. Is that glue? Is that like Git glue? Or get, no, 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 no. Glue is the, uh, developer. the developer. So, and you can hear this, right? Uh, I will. We will be in a second. Oh, that looks kind of right. cool. I might download it. I wonder if it's going to work good on my phone. It might. You is sound? it turned on? No, I don't have any sound. Glue games. It should have sound. Oh, they got an app for their games. Okay. We'll get sound in a second. Okay. <laughs> that kind of sucks. So on here you'll have, I guess I'll go back. Uh, it has, a, you're, you can go right into play, but uh, when you first start up the game, you want to pick a brother. So you got your bros list right here. And there's all kinds of little uh, tantalizing load screens. Some eye candy for you, Brad. Nice. <laughs> kind of reminiscent of the... Uh, She's holding a rocket. Yeah, I know. Very phallic. <laughs> <laughs> so, but they don't have anything on... He- this is the wrong... Like, when you first start up, you pick bros. Um, but you can also... They, they're planning on releasing an online play thing. It's all the way up. Oh, yeah. Um. And in between levels, you go in here to the store, and each level, you earn this. Uh, I don't know. If, I think it's some sort of some sort of crystal, like purple crystals or whatever. Uh, I like to call it unobtainium, but that's not what it is. <laughs> uh, but you scroll through here, and the more money you get, you, well, you turn the crystals into money by refining them in your refinery at the end of every level. And this is really where I was getting a lot of lag on the Evo. So every time it's, it's called Explodium. There you go. So it would, you'd hit it in, uh, the, like, if you get more, like $3,500 or whatever, then or $3,500 gold, then you can do these other ones, which will increase your yield, these other centrifuges or whatever. We've got audio, ladies and gentlemen. There we go. Or you can buy with money the other stuff, but you know, that actually costs you real money. Um, but the more, the higher you go here, the more you get for each, uh, like, piece of explodium that you collect. So and they have some options here. How is it even sexy? That's so sound effects, music, and row select, that's where I was going with that. So you can pick this and they have two bros for you to choose from. And it doesn't really matter I guess which one you pick. There's not any uh gameplay difference. It takes forever to download. Um, once you install it, 
Oh, yeah, I'm up to, uh, yeah, big time. It's a yeah. data file. Yeah, once you download and install it, it's got a data file that it grabs. Uh, but you have all these different levels. I mean, crazy. I'm still on Revolution 1, and even playing it on my phone, I haven't, I haven't beaten Revolution 1. So you pick each wave. Each wave has, they'll introduce new guys. And the, the enemies on here are very, very interesting. So yeah. they're, they're varied uh, abilities for each one and varied ways to kill them. So on the left, uh, you should be able to see on the screen right here how I'm moving the joystick. Use your left thumb to move around. And you use your right thumb to aim and shoot. Oh, it's one of those games. Yeah. That's cool. Huh. So I like this game. And you have these little barrels of junk or whatever that you can keep shooting and blow up and they'll take out a bunch of guys at once. Nice. So then you got these guys that you shoot them once they go down and then you got to keep shooting them. And then these other guys with the blades that swing around them. And each level uh, kind of layers all these different guys in. Or each wave, rather. Okay, you get a little bit more rapid fire than that. That's pretty slow. Yeah. You, you just have to unlock stuff. You know what I mean? You get more money and... You get more explodium and more money. And you can buy better weapons. Some more explodium. Those guys are that are running at me or whatever are uh, suicide bombers. You totally gotta blow them up as they're coming at you. So, but it's a pretty fun game. Uh, you know, just wave after wave, they come after you. And then you can also buy these little power-ups where the exclamation point is. Uh, it pauses the game, and they'll be listed out in here, and they'll, they'll do stuff like give you more life, or, you know, kind of upgrades and stuff. So, pretty cool game. Runs awesome on these tablets. Uh, I definitely recommend checking it out, because I love it. I've spent far too much time on it, and the graphics are just awesome. Mm -hmm. So Downloading it now. <laughs> Not even halfway yet. <laughs> so what do you have, Brad? Oh, what am I going to do first? Robo Defense or Cordy? Robo yeah. Defense. Uh, Robo Defense. <laughs> what? What? Hi. Oh, we're having people call. Yikes. You want to switch to the tablet? Yeah, absolutely. Let's do that. All right, I'm going to start a new game. Okay, you, you describe what this game is here, and uh, we'll be back in a second. We're all leaving the studio. All right, nice. I hope this thing doesn't crash on me. Cool. What is it? It's called Robo Defense, and it is not free. So in this game, what you do when you go to start a new game, usually starts you off on uh, level zero. And since I've never used this before... Trying to get back to, uh, ah, there we go. So, start game. So what you're going to do is you're going to drag your tower, towers, which cost money. You get money from killing enemies, and your money's up in the top right, along with your health. Um, as soon as an enemy comes out, he shoots them, and I wasn't ready. Uh, Kill him! Sit here and keep building your towers, and you can upgrade your towers by tapping on them. And then you can fast forward, so you can hurry up and get through it. So I, I fast forward through a lot of the game. <laughs> well, you can also uh, change the setting so that the uh, fast forward doesn't end at the every, at every level or every wave, rather. Fast. Oh, I never done that. Menu. So, let me see if I can, uh, those are all your gun towers, and then the next tower I'm going to get is my rocket tower. So I just put a rocket tower on the map, also upgradable, but when you upgrade these, you have the option to make them into mortars, which are slow but do high damage. You've got your surface to air missiles, and you can upgrade them all the way up to a, a heavy medium, or a heavy rocket launcher. So, let's say here keep going through this. I'm going to put a slow tower out, and what that's going to do is slow your enemies down. I'm going to keep fast forwarding. Steve, I'm again. <laughs> so what you're going to want to do is keep these guys from getting to the other end here. Right in the middle on the right side is a little opening, and uh, they're going to be going for that one. 
sit here and make little things that they don't get through. And keep upgrading everything. I have my gun towers upgraded with uranium shells because yeah. you get reward points for completing every mission and it paused because a guy just got through the other end there. Oh, man. Well, that's it. See, see, Brad doesn't suck at this game. He's used to the better power-ups. Yeah. <laughs> see, I had the uranium shells and they ignore uh, armor. All your upgraded, fully upgraded guns ignore armor. Yeah. This reminds me of that game we reviewed last week. What was that one? Probably another defense game. Uh, yeah. It was a couple all weeks ago. Hex defense, maybe. Yeah. These defense ones are interesting. Yeah. Well, Especially this one's people. old school, though. This yeah. came yeah. out, like... Back when Android first came oh, out. Oh, yeah. yeah. Like, we played this on the G1 like there was no tomorrow. Oh, yeah. And it wasn't an HD, <laughs> you know. Played this uh, new version's definitely stepped up the game. New, yeah, there's all kinds of new stuff. New uh, reward point achievements. New achievements. I guess if I, if I could criticize it about one thing, though. The uh, the grass background and stuff like they they definitely upgraded the the gun resolution and the background resolution is kind of uh... yeah a little oh let me see if I can get enough points here to show you uh... a little meh oh crap I forgot to put some gun to or some uh, uh -oh. yeah, towers yeah that's right and the helicopters come and ruin it for you oh play Oops. I gotta get an anti air cannon in there and I usually do it like this. One was there, and I'll put another one there. Because they always go right over the middle. So you slow them down, and then you stomp them. So, that's oh. Robo Defense, and then uh, your rocket ones upgraded to the missiles. This game's very addicting. You can sit here and play this for hours. <laughs> well, especially tell. with all the upgrade options, it gets yeah. pretty complicated. Let me see if I can show you. Yeah. Oh, looks like I backed out a little too far. Ah, <laughs> reward points. Far. Here's your reward points. So you got everything. Uh, the, the you super can, list. Yeah, you increase your bullet strength, explosions, faster reloads, longer slowdowns, teleport towers, mine towers, uranium shells, napalm, airstrikes, all kinds of crap. So how do you go back on this thing without uh? Is it this one? No, no, that was the oh, right one you back. pressed, but you were at the wrong. And screen. then you got your list of achievements here, which range from everything from completing basic difficulties like level two, hmm. all the way up to. Uh, what robot apocalypse? Complete level 100 robot in survival apocalypse. mode. Well, and they have them too where, like, you, you can only have so many lives left. You beat the level X with only, like, five lives remaining or one life remaining. So you have to let so many guys go through. Um, but then you have to make sure that not more than that go through because you'll lose. So that's Robo Defense. That's pretty cool. That's awesome. What is it? Uh, I think it's two ninety nine. Yeah, two ninety nine. That's pretty good. Good price. Good so, we're going to jump into my uh, next one? or Next one, what do you got? I got Cordy. Oh, I got very addicted to this game That's very quickly. That's such a cute little logo. Yeah. This game... Um, and cute music, too. Really good graphics. It's probably, I mean, it's like a, a Wii game, almost. <laughs> Is that the standard of graphics now? <laughs> <laughs> it looks like a Wii game. Well, it don't look like a PS3 game. Okay, well, PS2 slash Wii. But I'm already into these okay. levels so far. But you got, like, basic controls. Oh. There's not more than four wow. buttons here. So you sit here, and I've already completed this somewhat. So you just sit here, and you oh. jump through the levels. And they're, like, they're kind of puzzle games, but they're, I mean, they're pretty simple. So, <laughs> I mean, the average person should be able to figure these out. Yeah. I like oh. that grabbing thing, too. You jump up there, and then you have to hit the up button. To Oops, pull yourself I up. probably shouldn't yeah. have went in there. Uh-oh. Where'd you go? Because I was already past this level. But I'll oh. show you this level anyways. Oops. It reminds me of Sonic the Hedgehog for some weird reason. Oh, yeah, kind of. And now... Hey. So you have to figure out what you need to do to get past each level here. Oh, cool. And Oop. Brad's been running this game, so... Yeah, I've already beat this game. how to get through it. <laughs> You got all oh, those little gold things there. You have to pick those up to get through the levels. And I like how it keeps, you know, it's a 3D space. It's a platform game where you're only going left and right. Um, but they turn the corners and stuff, so you always get that 3D yeah. flip animation. Yeah, that is pretty cool. 
And it gets really intricate in some of the later levels too. There's a lot of stuff in the background going on. And see, now I got all those little gold things, so now I can tap on this guy, and he does some little thing, and the door opens. Cool. Boom. But I mean, some of the levels. I mean, I guess they get a little more complicated, but all this stuff was pretty simple to me. I mean, I hope they get them out with more levels that are a little bit harder. I mean, this is this is probably along the lines of make maybe fifth or sixth grade level, you know, mm -hmm. as far as complicated. There you go, Brad. This was kicking my ass. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, you ever heard of this game, Cordy? I'm like, yeah. What about it? He's like, oh, I oh. beat it. I might forget you. Yeah, I just ran right through it. Just gotta make sure you collect those little gold things. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Uh, here's where you can pull a block. Oh. oh. And it changed that. See, that's kind of cool. It changed the button down there, so it's not a yeah, down button. Yeah, that that will change into various things depending on what you're doing. Sometimes you can pick things up with it. Sometimes you can uh, there's all just all kinds of stuff you do. Yep. See, I got that one already. And sometimes it'll change into the little way you can. You don't have to tap on that. You can tap this button and it'll do that. See how the line travels through the screen there? It looks mm -hmm. like a little electrical current. You sit there and fly through the level. Oh. Plow through, as the case may be. Good job. So that's Cordy. It's pretty much for higher end phones. I don't know how much anything less than a one gigahertz phone would be able to handle this game. Tablet seems to crunch through it pretty easily, though. It's oh pretty, yeah, my phone. I mean, my uh, my uh, my Touch 4G handles it just fine. It's pretty sweet because we're still getting the audio coming through. I like that. It's like a nice background noise. Yeah. Oh right. yeah, it's soothing bad. music. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you're you're right though. It's very we like in the music, especially. Yeah. Oh it's yeah. Cool. See, here's one where you gotta push barrels. And so you see some of the stuttering in here. Uh, the tablet doesn't have that problem it's it just puts a little bit extra you know uh pull on the processor when you're doing the screen mirror you know, especially mirror. especially on a graphics intensive game like this yeah with yeah the hdmi out so you gotta stack the barrels up get your momentum oh Oop, nice crap. <laughs> but you see what i'm getting at here when you go over there and you open so I'm giving you kind of like the cheats to help you get through the door here. But if you would have had that barrel up there, and when you run back here, yeah. And you're uh -huh. See, and now I opened up that. And you're done. Good job. Yep, that's Cordy. All right, good review. Yeah, I think I'm gonna be spending some more time with that game. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty addicting. <laughs> So I guess how about some Android app news? I think that rounds out all the reviews we're going to be doing this week. Uh, the first big thing we have is, of course, spanning multiple platforms, uh, and that is the Pwn to Own event just happened. Pwn to Own. Oh my gosh. Yes. Uh, Pwn to Own is a competition where hackers attempt to exploit publicly available operating systems and browsers. Mm -hmm. So usually the uh, the most popular ones. So this year's results. Yeah. Uh, have have they been hacked or not? Were they vulnerable or not? Drum roll. So, Pwned, Safari, IE8, iOS, and BlackBerry. Mm -hmm. But not Pwned, Firefox, Chrome, and Android. Wow. So, which... Firefox, Chrome. Firefox, Firefox comma, Chrome, Chrome oh, comma, and Android. Okay. So That's surprising Firefox made it through. Yeah, this was, I think, Firefox 3.6, so it was one of the newer releases, of course, everybody's looking forward to Firefox 4, the supposed final release. Um, but yeah, holding up pretty well. So again, Firefox, uh, the perennial geek favorite. You know, it's been the uh, the secure option for quite some time. Uh, it's nice to see Chrome up there. That's my own personal browser, and of course, Android, my own personal operating system. So, good times. How do you feel about that iOS being hacked on Safari? Just getting it from all sides, Dave. Yeah, I know. <laughs> No comment. No comment. Indeed. So uh, that's some that's some pretty interesting stuff. Uh, but for some developing on Android is more lucrative than iOS. This I don't think you can believe because uh, I think it's kind of the common yeah. wisdom. It's the opposite way. You know, because yeah. uh, well, at least that's what you like to talk about anyway. The developers are all mm -hmm. on iOS because yeah. you know, blah blah blah. 
but whatever. That's where the money is. So Space Time Studios is a specific case point. Uh, Pocket Legends, which is a very popular app. It was named in the top five by Mashable for iOS. Mm -hmm. Uh, They ported the game to Android, and apparently they're getting over 9,000 downloads per day. Compared wow. to on iOS, it ranges from three to four thousand, uh, depending on if somebody posts a review of it, uh, you know, of it or something. So, um, of the people that bought the app, the developer is saying Android users use the app around three times more than iOS users, and this is very interesting because a lot of revenue models are moving towards in-app purchases, and they say that most of this game's revenue, in fact, comes from in-app purchases. And that makes Android actually 30 to 50% more profitable for the developer than iOS, even though Android doesn't have an official in-app purchase mechanism. Huh. So, of course, we all know that Google's going to be coming out with that this spring. Of course, that's three months or four months after they said they were coming out with Google Music, and we all know how that went. So, yeah. we'll see what happens. That's cool. Some other big news. Some controversy is brewing again Ooh. between the app stores. We were just talking about Firefox, the other competitor in the space, Opera, yeah. now taking it up to the next level here. They just came out with their app store, and uh, they're getting kicked off left and right. What is this? Well, they, they've they launched a mobile app store. It works on Java, Phone, Symbian, BlackBerry, Android, and Windows Mobile. Uh, apparently, it automatically filters apps for your platform and locale. Um the interesting thing about this, though, is most of their phones are feature phones that have Opera installed. Uh, so they're really targeting an untapped market. I mean, right. uh, except for maybe this other player called Getjar, yes. which also targets feature phones. And the other big news between these two is actually Getjar banned Opera oh. from their store because they have a non-compete clause for developers. It's not good. And it's, uh, it's widely believed, though, that Opera knew that they were going to do this. They just didn't care. Uh, specifically because the iOS version of Opera isn't going to have this app store. Yeah, the iOS version hasn't been updated in a long time. <laughs> yeah, we were looking back and it was like, it was released in March of 2010, updated in April 2010, and then never again. Yeah. So, and I don't know if that's because the app dates are waiting on the same approval process that took them several years to get approved. Yeah. But, I don't know. It's uh, kind of crummy. But... Mm-hmm. I don't know. You can't really blame Getjar for kicking them off. It's a pretty blatant thing. I mean, Getjar isn't going to sell apps that sell other apps. Why not? It's kind of it's not in their interest, you know. Yeah. It's like uh, it'd be like if Getjar had an app listed on the Android market or they don't? on the Amazon store or something. They don't have an app on the Android market. No. Why not? I don't know. Maybe because you can't list apps that sell apps on the Android market. Oh. I'm sure they probably have a non-compete clause as well. And that's why all eyes are on Google to see what they do with the Android version because uh, Dev, you know, Opera is kind of mm-hmm. tipping their hand saying that the Android version is going to come with this installed. Oh. So, I don't know. It's kind of uh, it's a little bit different for the Android market because right. this really competes more with the idea of the Chrome Web Store instead of the Android market. Mm-hmm. So we'll see how that comes out. Cool. Yeah, I just want to say Gun Brothers works uh, very well on the My Touch 4G. <laughs> it it finally downloaded. Better than the Evo. Yeah, it took forever, but it, it works great. <laughs> it looks good, too. Yeah, well, well, you will spend a lot of time. Speaking of something that works well, Flash. Finally, Flash 10.2 on Ooh. the Motorola Zoom. That's right. So Lane's happy about this. It, was, it leaked out, uh, Flash 10.2 did. And, of course, I downloaded it and installed it right away. I also installed Adobe Air, uh, and it works fine with that. So if you have Adobe cool. Air apps, uh, those will also run on the Zoom very well. Mm-hmm. And we will have a link to that in our show notes. Yes. So you can find out where to get that from. A direct link. Direct. From, from the XDA forums. Yes. So good times. Uh, you'll have to, of course, get an account and sign in on XDA to download mm-hmm. it because they don't let, just let any Joe Blow uh, of course. down that, I, that I, stuff. I, of course. But uh, speaking of... Uh, Joe Blow's downloading stuff, I guess, and re-uploading. I don't know what the Study at Home project <laughs> <laughs> has released a, an alien hunting app for Android. Makes sense. So oh, you have nice. to apply for the beta. You download and install the app, and they have you sign in using your Facebook account so they know who you are, and they'll let you know later on if you're accepted in the beta. I'm kind of excited about this. I want to get accepted. I haven't been yet. Um, but the idea is to crowdsource things that can't be easily done by the computers in the Study at Home network. Right. So, And I'm sure you're familiar with this. Uh, right. Well, I don't know if you can explain them what Study at Home is. Study at Home, they collect information from space. So, like, they have a bunch of telescopes that scan for uh, signals or just 
information that they collect from outer space. Yeah, radio telescopes. Radio, yeah. So then they go through that, and then they have to sift through all this tons and tons of data. And it's more than just one computer can, can handle. So they're crowdsourcing it. They're sending it out to other computers. There was some big news when they did this for the PS3. Yeah. Because that was some big processors that lay dormant a lot of the time. In yeah, seven house. cores on one device. They yeah. probably not use it most of the time. Exactly. So um, now they're going... It's kind of weird that they're doing this on... An, I mean, cool that it's an Android device searching for aliens. Yeah. Well, but this is a little but, bit different because it's actually showing you images and they're supposed to have visual cues that are interpreted from the data. And okay. the idea is is that there's uh, a certain kind of pattern matching that humans are better okay. at than computers so are. So this is similar to what Android does with their mechanical Turk system, which they send out a bunch of information and humans go through it and pick out human look, what stuff humans are best at. There pictures and Oh, you mean like the uh, what the the Google thing with, with the images where you compete? You you identify uh, them and yeah, it's kind of like that. Yeah, I mean that's what humans are best at. Yeah, the computers just haven't reached that. But Mechanical Turk is like something that Amazon does that you can. Oh, I thought you said Android. You said Amazon. Okay, it's true. Never mind. It's okay, Lane. It's so late. definitely check that out. We have a link for it, or you can just search for SETI S E T I on the Android market, and you can apply to be cool too and be accepted in the beta. So, but if you want to be cool like us, mm-hmm. check out the AndroidAppShow.com. That's right. Maybe even cooler than us. <laughs> so you have all kinds of videos you can see, uh, past reviews that we've done on the show. Of course, links out to our Twitter and YouTube account. Speaking of YouTube, you can go to youtubecom slash show to get full episodes delivered directly to you on your mobile device or your internet computer, whatever you have. Yeah, and always talk to us on twittercom slash show. Yep. Uh, ask us questions, suggest reviews. Uh, if you're a developer, get a hold of us. We like, you know, playing with apps. There's, you know, there's no guarantee that we'll review an app. I, you know, we, we do get some of them that we don't review, but, uh, mm-hmm. but we like talking to developers too. We like yeah. having that feedback loop. So it's cool stuff. Awesome and stuff. That pretty much wraps up the show for this week. We All will right. be back next week with some more great stuff. Yeah, another another week of Honeycomb Tablet app reviews coming up next week. Cool. Right. Yeah. And oh my gosh, almost forgot to mention the Android Tech Show. Oh. And the AndroidTechShow.com. We're gonna have lots of cool stuff to review. We're gonna have gonna have a full length review of the Zoom coming out soon. In all its glory. All its glory. <laughs> we like it. So yeah, thanks for watching. We'll see you guys next week. Yeah. Boom.